at the time of applications i had two research papers on my name uh for my internship experience i was really glad i could work with uh, iit bombay professors so that internship added a lot of value to my profile and i have a 11 month of experience work experience with tcs right now <laughs> So welcome to the podcast viewers in this episode we have with us Renuka Renuka has completed her undergraduate education in computer science from the Mumbai University and she's planning to fly abroad to the US for a masters in software engineering she's got four admits from good universities and we're going to understand from her why she chose software engineering how she went about the application process and how she got those four different admits so welcome to the podcast Renuka how are you doing thank you i'm doing good how are you i'm fine how does it feel to get four admits it feels surreal to be honest i'm really excited for the opportunities and yeah i'm looking forward to it so you know the four universities that you got an admits from are really good universities they're pretty selective it's not like they select everyone who applies True. so i'm sure audience would want to know what your profile is could you tell a bit about you know your gpa uh your research work your projects work all of that yeah so uh during my undergraduate i maintained a good cgpa it was around 9.8 mai okay uh, that, that's crazy 9.8 mai yeah. yeah so i mean i was able to maintain that um uh, then apart from that i worked on different projects i tr- i I have based my profile mainly on machine learning related projects so I worked on that uh, and I made sure that I also published this projects okay. so at the time of applications I had two research papers on my name uh, for my internship experience I was really glad I could work with uh, IIT Bombay professors so that internship added a lot of value to my profile and I have a 11 month of experience work experience with TCS right now got it so you know I want to talk a bit more about the IIT Bombay experience because that is something i think that would have added a lot of credibility to your profile yeah. now you know a lot of students assume that oh if i apply to iit bombay i'm not going to get through i don't have a good profile which might be true but i feel that you know if you build some projects on your own internally that can add value and then they might select you yeah. so could you tell the viewers that before getting into iit bombay what were the projects you had done in college So, so before applying to IIT Bombay, as I mentioned before, that I was working to develop my profile related to machine learning. Okay. Because I wanted to get a machine learning internship. Okay. So I did a project. I also had a research paper, one research paper before my internship. So I made sure to put all of these things on my resume, and I gave it a try because. there's no harm in trying yeah, no right? and i was also talking to a few people who also le- referred me but i'd say that build your profile to the internship that you really want to pursue and accordingly just try and connect with the people in those space and you might even get a reference and the one project that you had done before applying for this internship and the one research paper were they related like was it a part of the same project or these were two different things yeah yeah i had completed my project on autism detection uh, using machine learning during my project uh, undergraduate and i also published a research paper on the same project. got it so it's not like you had to do too much to get through yeah exactly you can uh, just try and develop some projects publish a research paper or even there are uh, options wherein you can network with your professors try yeah. to talk to them right. express your interest to them basically right. Right. and you can get a easily get a reference from there and what was the work that you did at iit bombay so at iit bombay i was working under professor ganesh ramakrishnan uh, we were working on the leap ocr for indian languages project it was basically about document layout analysis so we have different indian text languages um, many uh, low context languages which are not very popular so our task was to basically uh, research on the deep learning algorithms that can efficiently identify these uh, languages the text written on them and uh, extract it and also translate it to different languages so it was basically working on optical character recognition tasks got it so you using optical character recognition to extract text and probably then yeah. later on translate, translate it to different it languages. languages so that then allows people from across india to read text from different languages that they have not learned yeah got it and how long did this entire project take uh so i was working at iit bombay for 6 uh, months and it the project was quite extensive so they were working on it before uh, me joining their project and uh, the work was also continued uh, post me leaving the work. got it so you basically were contributing to an ongoing project and yes. your work is now being taken forward by juniors yes. or true interesting so i was looking at your profile apart from all the research and projects that you've done you've also done a lot of certifications yeah Uh, now the problem is that say you want to get into a technical field there are thousands of certifications out there how do you decide which is the right certification to choose 
so basically I have pursued all of those certifications as I was completing my courses. Okay. So I tried to look into the uh, commonalities between my curriculum and uh, the topics that were offered in the course. I also talked to a few of my professors and even some of them recommended me that these certifications will be really good. They'll complement your learning from the uh, during the lectures and you'll be able to explore more things that might not uh, be explored during the lectures. Well, sorry. You know, when I look at students' profiles, generally what happens is either they have a lot of research work and a lot of projects but no certifications or vice versa. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of certifications and no projects. You've done both. So with that experience, looking in hindsight, can you tell me what was more useful to actually build your skills? Like was it the certifications that helped you or was it your projects and research work? Uh, well, it's true, as you said, the projects and the uh, research work or the certifications. But for me personally, I'd say my internship at IIT Bombay was really important okay. for me. Okay. Because it was there that I got hands-on experience on different deep learning technologies. Um, I understood more about APIs, integrating uh, different technologies together, which I might not have gotten during, you know, certifications or maybe working on projects that I was developing alone or with my team. Whereas the, in at IIT Bombay, there were uh, really good professors to guide me, seniors who could uh, help me with my task. So I understood how things actually work in the real world cases. And from there, I was actually able to base my final year project on these learnings from my internship. So even my final year project uh, accumulated into a research paper. So I think I learned a lot from my internship. And I'd say that getting a good internship is uh, really valuable, adds value to the profile. So what you're saying is that the internship actually gives a lot of practical, real-world experience. True. Like yeah. what are the actual issues that come up when you're building something? That's not something that you can learn through a certification. True. So it's certainly worthwhile doing an intensive six-month internship to develop yes, your profile. definitely. Got it. And you know, your case is a bit unique because you had an intimate last year. Yeah. And you know as much as anyone, the process is not easy. Yeah. So, so why would you put yourself through the process twice? Yeah, true. Like mine is an interesting case, obviously. Um, I had a very few admits last year and the options were really limited. Um, I also had an admit for a special sessions master, which uh, due to which I was uh, the I was not able to uh, select my courses for the curriculum, mm. which I wanted. Mm. Um, and that is why I thought maybe let's, take a gap of a year and apply to the next admission cycle. That's a very mature decision because you know what happens is a lot of the kids who want to study abroad, they in part also want to go abroad because of the glamour associated mm -hmm. with it. Yeah. And in that they make a decision which is not right for them in the long run. True. But I recall that you and even your family was involved in this very mature, did not want to take a decision in a hurried fashion. Yes. Thought things through 10 times over and then took the right call. And I think that is paid off. This yeah, year. yeah, definitely. I'll say that. And I think a lot of it has to also do with your guidance and Nikita ma'am's help in that. Um, because I remember uh, every little issue that I had, I used to come and discuss with you and you guys were always available to resolve that. So I think we all worked together as a team and uh, got the great admits this year. I mean, yeah, we did work as a team, but honestly, the credit goes to you. You did most of the heavy li lifting. Because, you know, advising and telling is easy. And doing it and implementing it is actually something very different. But that's the heavy lifting part of it, which you did. So again, congratulations for that. That's very generous of you. But having said that, if you, let's say you have an admit and then you decide, okay, I want to go the next year. It means that the one year gap that is there in the middle, you have to use it very fruitfully. True. Because if you don't use it fruitfully, then that actually backfires. True. Because then next year, the university say, hey, what were you doing for one year? Mm -hmm. So how did you actually plan that one year? Like what did you do in that one year, which further developed your profile? Okay. Uh, so in my final year, as I was preparing for my master's and everything, uh, I did make, made sure that I had some sort of backup plan. So I did apply to jobs as well. Uh, in case if my, if there is some deviation to my master's journey. And during that process, I landed up a job at TCS. So for the past 11, 12 months, I've been working with TCS as an assistant system engineer. And it was really good. I got to learn technologies and I was able to use my time fruitfully. You know, you had a good GPA, which means that academically you're smart. You've done projects, which mean that you probably have good professional skills. And now successfully almost completed one year at TCS. Mm -hmm. 
was there ever a temptation that okay i'm doing well in my life let me now drop the plan of masters and you know i can settle down here because everything is going on fine yeah uh, basically yeah i mean the job as at tcs currently was also very comfortable i had a decent enough pay uh, comfortable timings really really good set of friends uh, but what i felt was i was getting into my comfort zone and for me personally i believe that it was not my time to be comfortable but rather break out of that comfort shell and do things that challenged me so masters was always a dream it was always my plan so i made sure that i didn't get too comfortable into it and i always uh, you know kept my attention on the masters dream that i had to pursue and work towards it got it and apart from all these technical things that you've done i think you're also trained bharatnatyam professional yeah. 10 years yeah i yeah, am 10 years so do you think that that training has helped you in any way during the profile building process or application process in unexpected ways uh well it helps does help me stand out a bit in terms of the other applicants because it, it i have been practicing it for a long year like about 10 years so it does show to the uh, maybe an interviewer or the one who are checking the application that okay she's doing this consistently that right. she has been practicing right. it and i was also asked during one of my interviews like oh you have been practicing so i could put forth my point that you know i'm consistent with my efforts or i do what i set my mind to so yeah it does help all right and tell me now if anyone is planning to pursue their masters in the future abroad what advice would you give to them uh well i have two bits of advice first is i'll say research a lot okay because uh, from my experience also i was researching a lot i connected with seniors on linkedin and i talked to them i asked them every bit of query that i had because they are the ones who are living that experience they will be the ones to offer you the honest feedback and on ground feed feedback so apart from researching along with your help and uh, the seniors i was able to uh, finalize my options uh, i weighed all the factors uh, including the financial ones which are really important uh, once i finalized my admits i made sure to apply early because i remember from my first uh, tried uh, applications i was a bit late in terms of applying so this time i made sure that i applied really early um i had their de- deadlines listed in my excel sheet and i made sure to submit them at the right time because it increases the chances of your application getting through and you getting admitted so i'd say research a lot and apply the other two factors research a lot apply early and i think you threw in a third one also over there which is talk to seniors yeah and get an understanding of what's actually going on true, over there true. right all right so three pieces of advice yeah. i think that's that's great I think that's going to really help kids who want to apply to the US next year. So again, thank you for doing this and good luck with your future. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good. So, thank you for tuning into this podcast viewers. Uh I hope you enjoyed this. Uh we'll get more such episodes for you. We would appreciate it if you share this video to your friends for them to view. If you subscribe to our channel, uh keep watching this podcast and see you in the next one.